before we go into some functional overviews, what we want to do is just set a foundation so some of the functions that tie together will make a little bit more sense if we show you how we engineer an item as an example. And this is going to be a brief overview. We're not going to go into uh, very deep detail, but it'll give you a good understanding. I'm going to go into my part maintenance. And the part we're going to be looking at is called A8000. So I'm just going to put that in here. And you can see I have a view panel, which gives me some inventory information and uh, other details related to this part. We're not going to go into um, too much detail here. We, we just want to show that we can capture costs, which are really imported from the bill of material and routing that we're going to show you here in just a second. But from here, the main point of this is this is a fabricated item that we're building. And I want to show you the structure of the bill of material and the routing that we're going to use to build this. So to get to it, I'm just going to go, it, we have a part and we have an engineering master engineering ID. Uh, and the reason we have these IDs is because I may have several different ways of building this same part. So I can have several masters. Uh, for instance, if I'm in a multi-site uh, organization and two sites build the same product, they may build it differently. So you might have two different engineering masters for it. And this is an alphanumeric field. So, you know, for example, maybe I make one of these in a site in the USA and one in a site in Mexico. So. I may have an engineering ID called USA and one called MEX. But here it's just a zero, which is generally the default. I'm going to click on that little arrow to drill into it. And you'll notice that this is going to look different than what most other systems uh, would look like uh, because it's a visual format, which is where visual originally got its name from. But the nice thing about this visual format is I, I could see a lot of information right off the bat without having to really concentrate on this bill. Uh, the top item here in white, that is my finished good item. The yellow cards represent raw materials or sub-assemblies uh, that I might be pulling from stock. The blue cards represent operations or resources where the work is being done. And notice one is a little darker blue, which represents an outside resource. So I'm doing the work internally up to operation number 60, and then it goes out for heat treating to a vendor. It comes back for inspection. And then of course we have another material here in yellow. And the nice thing about this is these materials are associated with the operation that it gets consumed at. And the schedule uses that because it knows in some big assemblies like this, especially that, hey, you don't need this bearing at the beginning of the job. So if the schedule is running and it says you don't have this bearing, it may say, well, you don't need it for a week because it'll be a week before it gets to the assembly operation. Uh, so it'll still allow you to begin the scheduling of that item. Over here are what we call legs or sub assemblies. So very quickly, just, you know, again, visually looking at this, I can tell I have two sub assemblies associated to uh, this main assembly and they're both associated at operation number 60 the welding operation so those are materials or or assemblies that are required at the weld step that are going to be welded together and i can see that each of these has their own individual bill of material and routing to go with it they can be completely separate uh, when I build these and I can build them to stock and they would just show up as a yellow card over here if I wanted to do that. But in this detail, I'm basically saying I build these only for the main product when it's ordered. So they're build to order sub assemblies, not stocked sub assemblies. And I can open up each one of these cards so I can open it up and see the detail behind that header. Um, and, you know, see how my scheduling has worked, who, who engineered it and so on when it was engineered, uh, see some drawings. I can have documents associated. I can have as many documents associated with this as I want. And this is throughout visual, by the way, uh, this is just one example of where it might be used. I could have work instructions, for example, uh, but work instructions, I would tie to the actual operation card. So I would open up my material card and here's where I enter the quantity per any scrap, um, who the vendor is, if it's a purchased item, any planning information, reference designators for folks that are in the electronics industry uh, and so on. Same thing with my operations. I could just double click on that, open that up and 
Here's some work instruction that will print on a traveler or show up on the shop floor mobile labor collection device out on the floor if they're using that. So there's really no need for paper. But I track my setup hours, my runtime. Uh, and of course, these are the things associated with this resource that is calculating the cost. It, it knows that this resource in the background has a hourly cost, an hourly burden or overhead, and it multiplies that by the hours that we said it takes to, to produce that part, multiplied by quantity. Lots of other things I can do with this. I can have concurrent resources and so on. We're not gonna go that deep into it with, the, with our overview. We'll talk about it a little bit maybe in the scheduling part, but that is generally what we call an engineering master.